Welcome back guys. This week's episode um, marks the end of an era regarding the overweight saga. Um, the saga that's been keeping me up periodically from time to time um, regarding how overweight my van is. So if you haven't been following along, the backstory is I converted a Mercedes Sprinter. It was very overweight. Um, I changed a few things and it was overweight. I totally ripped it out and started again um, and it was slightly underweight. I finished the van off and I think it's creeping up to being overweight again. Um, tired and sick of all that nonsense. I'm going for a bulletproof solution. Here it is. <laughs> So you've probably guessed it, I am going to upplate my vehicle. Um, getting very popular at the moment. Uh, I am on Instagram uh, and I've been keeping people up to date on there. Uh, and so many messages come back, I wanna do this, I need to do this, how do you do this? Um, so pretty much here it is. Someone like myself that passed their test post 1997, no grandfather's rights, just a driving test. Um, you will have to go down the road of um, increasing your license status um, as best way to explain it. You will need to sit a category C1 uh, as a minimum. You need to you need to pass a test that will allow you to drive something over 3.5 tons. Um, there is a category C1 which is 3.5 to 7.5 I believe. Category C is a rigid vehicle so nothing that's articulated from anywhere above 3.5 tons up to 32 tons rigid. That's the test I sat in case one day I want something really massive like an RV or a horse box or a truck, who knows, like a real big truck. So if I was gonna sit a test, I wanted, um, I wanted to take me further than just seven and a half tons. So the process is broken down, I've broken it down into five stages. Um, so here we go, stage one. A medical. You will need to take a medical. It's basically just blood pressure, an eye exam, um, and just making sure that you're fit and well, basically. Your GP surgery can offer you this. My GP surgery wanted 145 pounds. Um, so I got to a bit of Googling and I managed to find a traveling medical center. Um, they stopped off in a pub car park on a Saturday morning. Fully legit, fully accepted um, by the DVLA, obviously, because it worked for me. Um, so you're looking for a D4 medical, um, or you send off a D4 form. Google whether or not you can get a traveling uh, medical center near you because you don't wanna spend any time in a doctor's surgery if you don't have to, and it was a third of the price. Stage two is your provisional. So once you've got your medical out of the way, you can send off to provisionally drive a category C vehicle or your chosen category. Um, they will, you send off your medical and they will send you your photo card license back with a different number on it. Um, and you can always check on gov.uk, type in your license, um, license number and your name and your date of birth potentially, uh, and it will tell you everything that you are allowed to drive and everything that you are allowed to provisionally drive. Um, so once they send you it back, the license will still remain pink, it will be a driving license, but there'll be a subcategory that allows you to provisionally drive um, the category that you've chosen. I believe this step was free. Um, it didn't cost anything to receive um, my license back um, as a provisional. Step three is your theory test. Uh, so once you've got your medical done, you've sent off, you've got your provisional back, get your theory test done. Um, I would actually suggest downloading an app. Um, I did it, they're the official questions, so they're the actual questions that you expect to find on your test. Um, instead of watching my videos um, every night like you do, perhaps, perhaps do a bit of revision, um, because it is not just common road sense, it is a lot of stuff that you probably haven't even thought about, tachographs, bridges, um, 
all kinds of random stuff. You may have been driving for 30 years and you might know every road sign, but there's a lot of things that you probably take for granted driving a car or a small van. You won't think about heights of bridges, um, widths of loads, how to load certain things and tachographs. There's a lot of things that are um, literally just about lorry driving that in our scenario, if you're doing this just so that you can drive your van at a higher um, gross vehicle weight, you'll never use again. A lot of the questions are very simple. Um, a lot of the questions are very stupid. Um, a lot of common sense. So you're approaching a zebra crossing, two elderly people are still crossing. Do you A, rob your local post office, B, burn down a garage or C, give them time and let them cross. Is that, you know, sometimes it's absolutely mind blowing. But get your theory test um, booked. What I would suggest is get swatting up on the questions, um, download an app. Some of the apps nowadays have got the actual questions and they've got hazard perception videos. Mine cost about eight pounds, um, which is a lot when you're buying an app, but you know, I passed first time, so it must have worked, um, must have been worth its value. The theory test I believe is somewhere around 27 pounds and the hazard perception 13. Um, I know you can get both probably for under 40 pounds. Um, so if we're adding up the money as we're going, I would, I would say they're about 40 pounds for the pair. Um, unlike the normal category B driving license, um, they are totally separate. Uh, so the theory test questions are 100 questions and the uh, hazard perception is 19 videos. You do take them separately. So if you fail one, um, you only go and reset, reset one, um, which I thought was a bonus. Luckily, um, I passed both first time, but on the driving license, I know that they are both together. So if you failed the hazard perception, uh, even if you got 100% on your questions, you would have to reset it. Not the case with category C. Um, so there that is. Stage four, driving and your test. Um, unlike category B, um, like car license, uh, it's not one a week, two a week, three hours a week, that kind of thing. They like to put you in blocks. Um, that's the only format I've seen it. So mine was three, four hour days of training followed by my test the following morning. Uh, I, I had an hour's drive in before my test as well. So I was out at six in the morning. Um, uh, doing a quick lesson before my test. So I had about 13 hours of training in the end. Um, I do think myself as a confident driver, although I'd never driven anything bigger than that van. Um, so only you know what you kinda, uh, how many hours you think you might need, um, perhaps have a good chat. Uh, they may even drive you for a couple of hours and assess you and then decide on how many hours you need. Um, but mine was four consecutive days, three days training, followed by the test, um, and I passed first time. So pretty chuffed for that. My driver training and test cost me um, just over a thousand pound. All of the um, companies up where I live seem to hover around that mark. Um, I just found a place that was local to me, had um, a lot of good Google reviews. Um, I think I even went as far as checking their success rate. Um, so the more training you need, the more it might cost, obviously, because it's, you know, it's a business done by the hour. I bought a 16 hour package, which included the test. I believe there's 20 hours um, packages available. They may even, um, you may even find a company, if you have no idea what your driving experience is like or whether or not you're gonna be any good, you may even be able to get an assessment for a couple of hours and then they will kind of project the kind of package that you need. So I did pass first time, um, big chufty badge. Uh, on the day you get given uh, proof, uh, a certificate like that. My instructor, uh, or my examiner should I say, he offered to send off my license and sort the paperwork out uh, and I obviously obliged because less paperwork the better. I'd only fill it out wrong, I'm guessing. And about two days later, and I knew I know we do have a HGV shortage at the moment. Um, unfortunately, I, I won't be driving any produce up and down the country. I'll be driving the same van that I drive anyway. We'll just be calling it something different. 
but I've got my license back with a different number on it um, and on the back I can quite clearly see that I am now um, entitled to drive a category C vehicle up to 32 tonnes. Stage five, up plating. So I was in contact with um, a guy that messaged me regarding my strip out on my YouTube video. He said, please stop stripping your vehicle out. Let's up plate it. Um, as it goes, the layout is absolutely mint. I'm glad that I did um, strip it out. So there's no, there's no love lost there, but I am still up plating it just in case I want to carry more, do some more stuff. Um, we all want more payload, I don't need to explain that to you. Anyway, this guy got in contact with me um, and I messaged him backwards and forwards and I don't want to poo-poo any kind of company, but SV Tech told me, and I even said this in one of my previous videos, they told me that my vehicle needed to be registered as a camper van for them to upplate it. Um, so I, I've even bought a big horrible vinyl that I was going to stick on the side of the vehicle because I was going to go down the road of registering it as a camper van and the DVLA do not want to do that anymore. Anyway, this guy told me, no, not the case. Um, I don't quite know what happened with SV Tech. Perhaps um, they've changed what they're doing now because I know a lot of people are still using them and it's working absolutely fine for them. But vehicle van weight engineering sorry should I say in contact with me um, he assures me um, the paperwork is going through now and he's already sent me my new plate he sent my v5 off so I'm just waiting for clarification from the DV DVLA that everything goes through okay he contact contacted me and we went ahead um, he's taken care of absolutely everything. I paid the fee, which at the moment in 2021 is 200 pounds for my vehicle. I filled out a few um, measurements. If my vehicle was totally standard, I believe we could have upplated it to 3.9 tons. Um, I actually ironically fitted air suspension to it a while ago to make it look less overweight, believe it or not. Uh, the irony is the kit was another 12 kilos. So I added 12 kilos to make it look less overweight. Um, but because I did fit that air suspension kit, he's done the maths um, and he has approved it to be upplated to 4.15 tons. So that's 4,150 kilos. That's an extra 650 kilos payload when it only started with 950 absolutely crazy absolutely chuffed i won't need or go near anywhere near that threshold whatsoever um so yeah i basically filled out a few things a few measurements um he's done all the maths he's taken care of absolutely everything um i believe my tax might even go from 280 pound a year to um 175 pounds a year or something like that i know there's a big um, decrease available so his services pay for itself in two years anyway um, so this could be the start of the end as far as the overweight situation is concerned let me show you this I haven't stuck this on the van yet because um, it's not official I haven't received the v5 yet which brings me to a little tip don't upplate your vehicle before you are entitled to drive it unless you're not going to be driving it because if this or the if the v5 comes back and you fail your test um, god forbid or it's cancelled you're then stuck with a vehicle that you're not entitled to drive so make sure you do things the right way around i that's why i put them in stages i've done it this way that way that way so that i never tripped myself up and made things worse for myself because it's worth it's it's worse to drive something that you're not entitled to than it is to be driving something overweight. Um, you'll get in much bigger trouble for driving something that you're not licensed to. I'm gonna put a bonus round in here for all of the people that say, 
It's 3.5 tons for a reason. Um, braking distances, overweight this, overweight that. You're gonna hurt your engine, that kind of thing. Um, just So just very quickly, some people are gonna say you're gonna hurt your engine. Uh, I've got the 316, it's a nice powerful engine. It's an automatic. If I can tow a two ton trailer, um, I'm sure I can carry 300 more kilos in the back. Um, if you imagine if I was fully loaded at three and a half ton, with a two ton trailer, which is perfectly legal um, because the train weight is five and a half ton. If I'm allowed to drive that up a hill, I'm allowed to put a few more bits in the back, eh? This is totally recognized by the DVLA. It's not a case of um, finding a loophole or anything like that. Um, this guy has actually done his research so much that um, He's found an article of um, some scientists that researched it. Um, I'll put the link below because I don't want to bore you too much. Um, it is actually a fascinating read. Um, yes, if you put loads of weight up against your bulkhead, it will increase the stopping distance, but believe it or not, on a fully loaded van, if you added more weight over the rear axle, the braking distance was reduced. Um, mental, but that's science. Um, so yes, Please don't be concerned for my braking distance. Um, don't forget that the, the, the vehicle parts aren't built to just disintegrate at three and a half tons. Um, I can't find, maybe someone can tell me, but I'm wondering if maybe it shares the same parts as it does for the five ton version, because that's another point. I've got the same engine out there um, that people would have in a five ton sprinter. Um, and, and I believe there's even a 513, which is a smaller engine and a larger van. So I'm not worried about the engine capabilities. I'm not worried about the stopping distance. Um, and to be totally honest with you, I'm not worried about the stopping distance because when my van was really, really fat, it still stopped. Um, and this is totally legal and legit. So that's it guys, that's how you upplate your vehicle. I will leave the um, a link below to the guy that I used. Um, very, very helpful. Um, the day I told him that SV Tech told me I needed to be registered as a camper van, he laughed and said, yesterday I upplated a crane. So he's very, very helpful, um, takes care of absolutely everything. You pay your fee, send him a few bits of information, um, and then it all just comes back. Um, and now I am sat waiting for my V5, that could take a couple of weeks. Once that's through, I will update you guys, but I'm sure it will be absolutely fine. So with 650 kilos. Just while I blabber on about all the extra things that I'm gonna carry, I also wanted to let you guys know that I phoned my insurance company um, and I, I told them what I was doing and it had no effect. The same vehicle with the same registration with no changes, um, I, I do recommend that you tell them, but um, no action was needed and no cost. So it means I can carry extra stuff. Um, I might even be looking at air conditioning. So anyway, um, there it is. Very, very simple. If you've already got a category C license, this is an absolute no brainer. I do understand that if you are, um, if you had a category B just like myself, it is, um, it, you know, it is a big effort, it is a big job, it is a big ask, but um, believe me, it, it's better than stripping your van out. Please subscribe guys, I'm trying to bring you stuff that, um, that I've personally looked for on YouTube and couldn't find or wanted a different angle, um, and I'll see you next time.